Okay, for the final part of this first lecture, I'm going to give you a demo that shows you the structure of the course as a whole. So enough slides. Let's pop over here into Python. Before I begin, let me just say that this demo includes some more advanced techniques. I don't expect you to understand everything that happens. So you're welcome to ask me questions about it and I'll certainly explain to you what's going on. But let me just work through this. Um, starting next lecture, we'll actually build everything from the ground up so that we take away all the mystery and you really understand what's going on. But it takes a little bit of time to get to interesting demos if you go through everything in excruciating detail. And I wanted to do something cool on the first day. So, um, so this is meant to be just an overview to give you a flavor of what Python can do, what programming languages uh, are all about, and the structure of the course, all at the same time. Okay, so um, there was a writer named Shakespeare. He wrote many plays. We just opened all of them. And we're gonna take those plays and we're gonna read them into text. Text is the collective works of Shakespeare's plays. We'll read them all in and we'll split them up into individual words. So what's text? Well, text is a long sequence of words. The first 25 are A Midsummer Night's Dream, title of a play. Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, blah, 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 blah. Beautiful Shakespeare. Okay, so we have it all. Don't believe me? Well, we'll just count the length of text, and we'll see there are 980,000 words of Shakespeare. That's a lot. Busy guy. Is that really that impressive, though? Well, it turns out that most of it, it's just the word the over and over again. 23,000 thes. What else is Shakespeare famous for saying? Oh, it says thou a lot. 4,500 thous. Thou is how Shakespeare said you, right? Or how people said you in Shakespearean times. So there probably shouldn't be too many yous. This kind of surprised me. There are actually 12,000 yous. So the you is more popular than thou. Is this the most common thing of all? It turns out that the most common thing in the way that we've broken up words, a Midsummer Night's Dream now, comma, fair, Hippolyta, comma, is the comma, 81,000 commas. So that is 8.3%, or one twelfth of all of Shakespeare's just commas over and over again. So what's the big deal? Well, it turns out that the stuff between the commas and the does is what makes it particularly impressive. Um, so let's see if we can learn something about that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of the words in this text and view them as a set. So let's walk through what's happened so far. I've opened up Shakespeare. I've grabbed all the text. I looked at what was in it and I counted some of its contents. Open is a function. Set is a type of object. And an object is something that represents data. And this kind of representation does something smart, so it removes all of the repeats. So words are all of the unique words inside of text. So there were 980,000 different words in the text in total, but how many unique types of words? Well, now we're down to only 33,505. What's the max word? Swaggered. Turns out max looks alphabetically at all the words and picks the one that's latest in the alphabet. But we can use max, which is a built-in function, to get um, other kinds of maxes. So if we're really interested in the length of the word, then we can use the max function along with the key of the length to tell us what's the longest word in Shakespeare, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral. Okay, 
So objects are powerful ways of representing information. Functions manipulate information, like finding the max. And all of these are very basic expressions. So this is an expression, this is an expression, and this is an expression, etc. But we can actually build complex expressions or combinations by combining together these pieces. Okay, so as an interlude, let me tell you about a little trick in Python, which is that you can take text, which is just a sequence of letters, D, R, A, W, and you can reverse it with a shorthand that looks like that. There are other ways to reverse it, uh, but we'll use this one for today's lecture. So draw backwards is ward. Now we can use this uh, little construction inside of something more complicated when we build a combination. So we could ask, what are all the W's in words? So what are all the different words? We'll call each word W for now in order to refer to it and ask, uh, which are the words that when I spell them backwards, I get the same word back? And let's make sure that W is at least uh, five, letters long just so that we don't get too many. Okay, so Python goes to work, looks at all the words that Shakespeare ever wrote, and finds that these six are the same spelled forwards and backwards. What else can we do? Well, we can ask for all the words in Shakespeare, if the word spelled backwards is also a word. Not necessarily the same word, but just any word. And let's say it's four letters long. Give me the set of all of those. Okay, so this is called a set comprehension is the whole type of expression. It has these various parts. It says what collection we're starting with and then what condition we're interested in in order to write down all the answers. We hit return. And we see all of the different words in Shakespeare that are also words spelled backwards. So loop is pool, seas is seas, mead is deem, star is rats, etc. And we don't just have to look at words of length four, we can look at words of length five. If you want to pause for a second and think of one yourself before I hit return, now's the time. There's the list. Lived is devil. Sleek is keels. And of course, refer is refer. And so it's in this list as well. Okay. Can we go to level six? Sure. Diaper is repaid spelled backwards. Can we go to level seven? No, that's the empty set. So there are no seven letter words in Shakespeare that are also a seven letter word spelled backwards. Okay, so what can we say about this example? Well, we learned that we can use Python to do some pretty powerful text processing very quickly. But Python was not designed as a program to analyze Shakespeare. It was designed as a general purpose programming language that happens to be very effective at doing all kinds of different things. And this is just one of them. So that's why we study computer science as a general discipline, is to understand that programming languages are quite general tools that we can use to accomplish whatever we want. Okay, we also saw that there are these things called functions, which do processing. There's objects that represent information. And then behind the scenes, the program that's actually doing all the work of going through all the different words uh, seeing whether they're the same, spelled backwards, etc., is called an interpreter, the Python interpreter. And that's basically the structure of this course. So we're going to learn all about functions, then we'll learn all about objects, and then in the second half of the course, we'll learn all about interpreters, and finally learn some data processing techniques that let you analyze not just the collective works of Shakespeare, but much larger data sets than that.